What's up everyone? Riley here and welcome back to Overkill Reviews, Banger TV's weekly heavy metal review show. If you haven't already, hit that like, hit the subscribe, give us a follow, make sure to check out the Patreon. It's been a while. Uh, this is going to be my first review back in the new format. I'm hoping to get into this more frequently. I've just been up to a whole bunch of nonsense. And to bring us back into it, we're looking at an absolutely classic Swedish doom metal band. This is Candlemas with Sweet Evil Sun out November 18th. Magnificent, my empress. Candlemas lore. So the year is 1982 and there is a band called Nemesis and they consist of Leif Edling, Christian Webberd, Matt Ekstrom, and a dude named Andreas Wallen. About two years into them jamming, they get into some trouble with some copyright issues and they got to change the name. So Leif Edling takes the reins on this and they become Candlemas. After a little bit of a lineup change, and they're introduced to Johan Lenkvist, who is our vocalist on Sweet Evil Sun, they end up releasing the album Epicus Dumicus Metallicus in 1986. By 1987, they have a different vocalist, Messiah Markulin, and they release the album Nightfall. The band kind of continues with a few more lineup changes until 1994, when they take a hiatus. They break up. And in 2002, they get the band back together. Leif Edling says, let's get this shit rockin'. And since then, they've released five full-length albums. That is 12 full-lengths altogether, making this album lucky number 13. My first point and the first thing I noticed when this album started was the absolutely filthy riffs that a lot of the tracks start off with. So first song comes in, it's called Wizard of the Vortex, and there's some like swooshy intro, and then about 30 seconds in, it's just this absolutely like dirty face, slow head nod, stanky doom riff. And once you get into the album, you realize that there's a lot of these really good riffs. So Lars and Mape, I believe, or Map, Mape, listen, I'm not Scandinavian. Um, they've been, they just rock the riffs all the way through. So because these riffs are so absolutely grimy and they're so noticeable, you can pick them out in each song and then... I kind of realized that every song had a really similar song structure. So it would start off with this absolutely grueling riff. You'd get into the verse action where Johan Lankwitz would come in with his vocals and be, he'd be singing about something like wizards or Nosferatu or mythos and gods. Um, and to be fair, his vocals aren't the same as they were in 1986, but that is to be expected. He still has a very strong operatic voice. But this kind of made the album very predictable. By the time I was maybe four or five songs in, I kind of already knew what I was in for. This was going to be the thing. I'm going to go, wow, sick riff. Then we're going to have a verse. Then I'm going to go, wow, sick riff again. And that predictability led me into feeling a little bit bored. And like I wasn't being fed any of that grueling excitement that they were trying to feed me in the lyrical context. So this one, it was kind of wholesome to me. So their drummer, uh, Jan Lind, he's been a member of the band since 1987. And his drumming style and his patterns and the way that he moves have stayed really consistent. He always keeps it up with like the bass, bass, crash with like the cymbal and the tom, bass, bass, crash. And it's not complicated. And every song is somewhat this pattern, maybe a little bit more indirect, it's just honest work and it fits well. And essentially what I'm trying to say is that if you compared, this is actually what I did and I think you should do this too. 
play their track Sweet Evil Sun off the new album and then listen to the classic song Bewitched and you will be surprised how similar the drumming patterns still are and how he has created his own sound and he's still holding it true. The production on this album is so clean, just crystal, crystal clear, and I don't like it. <laughs> so I love any production that kind of sounds like a bunch of ghouls having a bush party. Just raw, scratchy, dirty, kind of has been festering with a little bit of rot on it. Um, and I think that that works so well with doom metal. If you're rocking the fader, if you've got the greasy muffled tone and you're kind of making that Nosferatu-esque witch's brew and it's organic, it's like an organic mix of stinky leaves, I'm sold. I'm absolutely sold. I'm into it. The clarity on Sweet Evil Sun is unbelievable. And I think that makes it feel very theatric, uh, very overproduced. It's kind of like, yeah, that's showbiz, baby. And that isn't my thing. But it might be your thing if you like Doom with good production and a good mix. This is the album for you. But if you like Doom where you can smell the rotting witch's feet, this is not the one. Doom metal is such an extensive subgenre these days. The amount of development since Candlemass started is <laughs> just unfathomable. We have had subgenres that have had subgenres that have had subgenres. And to be a band that has been there since the beginning, I have the utmost respect for them and will always have open ears for anything that they do, regardless of the time frame. It's, I think a lot of us kind of drink that glittery gold that has come down off of that Wizardous Mountain Peak that Candlemass created 30 to 40 years ago, and that was the expectations that we had that they would still hold that same essence. And you know what? They just don't. But after 40 years, what really can you expect? There is so much to change and there is so much to do. So don't jump into this album thinking that you're going to have the same candle mass that you did all the way back then. These people, they have grown and they're not the same anymore. And, but you can jump into this album with open arms and some familiar feelings and some not so familiar feelings. And I think with this new album, I can keep old candle mass in my mind and new candle mass in my mind. And I can reach for either of those things when I'm in the mood for either of those things. So with that being said, and the personal doom preference that I look for nowadays in my life, I'm going to, and what I know candle mass has created in the past, I'm going to give this album a three and a half skulls out of five today on Overkill Reviews. So first off, I've got Campfire with Till Clover's Tact. It's coming out on Indie Recordings, November 11th, 2002. I've loved Campfire for many moons. I will always listen to any band that encapsulates the sounds of stomping trolls being devious so well. Um, and seeing that they are just completely crushing black metal from Norway, I would expect nothing less for this new up and coming album. Uh, I'm yet to be disappointed by them. So let's look forward to the new content. Second up, I've got Sorted Blade with Every Battle Has Its Glory. This came out on October 15th, sorry, October 14th, 2022. They are a Swedish, epi, a Swedish epic heavy metal duo. Um, I read that they wanted to make this album like heavy metal, um, Hammerheart era Bathory-esque. So I was intrigued. And the vocals are so Manila Road, Crystal Logic era, which is super awesome. It made the album really, really fun. Thank you for coming to hang out with me today. Hoping to get back into this more often. And I hope you enjoy Candlemas and Sweet Evil Sun. Take it easy and I'll see you next time.